Welcome to Bible Study with Jairus, brought to you by Jairus Bible World Ministries. Do not be afraid, only believe. Brother Jairus leads a Bible study group in Chinese every week, and the Holy Spirit often speaks to people during these meetings. We felt compelled to share some of the revelations we received from the Holy Spirit, and we hope these studies will reach and benefit more listeners. All scripture is quoted from the English Standard Version, unless otherwise noted. Thank you for joining us. Bible Study with Jairus, Exodus 1 The book of Exodus contains many powerful examples of faith. The story of Moses leading the Israelites out of Egypt demonstrates God's power and Moses' faith. Hebrews 11 says that Moses lived by faith throughout his life. He refused to obey the king's edict and was willing to suffer affliction with his people. Moses left the royal family because he glimpsed the glory of Christ and was willing to suffer for the glory to come. God counted his obedience as his faith. In the same chapter, we see that Moses' parents also demonstrated faith. They hid Moses for three months, valuing his life above their own safety and well-being. Their action was motivated by trusting God. Although they were not listed in the Hall of Faith in Hebrews 11, the midwives who saved the Hebrews' babies are examples of faith. In Exodus 1, these midwives paved the way for Moses' appearance and his faith. Their faith provided a powerful example for Moses' parents and then Moses to follow. In the same way, we need to have faith in God. In today's article, we will learn who these midwives were and how their faith paved the way for the salvation of all of Israel. We will also learn how to apply these lessons of faith and courage to the political challenges faced by today's Chinese Christians. Who were the midwives mentioned in Exodus 1.15? Were they Egyptian or Hebrew? Although we don't know for sure, I believe they were Hebrews. The ruling strategy of the Egyptian pharaohs was to use the insiders in the political system to control the outsiders who were not in the political system. As such, these midwives may have held a powerful position. They may have received their wages from Egyptian pharaohs or from people who had status and authority in Egypt. As insiders, they may have faced intense pressures. The midwives must have asked themselves, should we protect our own interests within the system, or should we obey and fear God? These were difficult questions, but the midwives had the right answer. They chose to fear God over Pharaoh. As a result, God gave them families and greatly blessed them. Satan will use ethnic conflict in any way he can. He only wants to achieve domination. Pharaoh first commanded the Hebrew midwives to kill the Israelite boys. When this didn't work, he asked the Egyptians to throw the male babies in the river. However, we must stay true to our faith in God. I encourage Chinese insiders, especially Christians within the system, to trust and fear in God more than in the government. Like the Hebrew midwives, take a stand for truth. One way Chinese Christians can do this is by joining the whistleblower movement. The whistleblower movement is a democracy movement led by Miles Gao, a wealthy Chinese exiled to the United States. Their goal is to overthrow the Communist Party and establish a democratic China. Under his leadership, the new federal state of China was established on June 4, 2020. Originally, I had absolutely nothing to do with this movement, but my wife began following it in 2020. I was very confused about this movement, so I prayed diligently for God's wisdom. God began to guide me through various dreams, letting me know that the movement came from Him. He told me through a dream that China's democratization and evangelization are closely related. At first, I only knew that God had called me to preach the gospel to Chinese people. I never planned to participate in a democracy movement, but in a dream, God revealed to me that China's democratization will establish a platform. 
including media platforms, that will help us spread the gospel. At the same time, the Chinese evangelization movement will advance the process of China's democratization and achieve final victory. In another dream, I was taken into the future. After the success of the Chinese democracy movement, these Democrats came to thank me, saying that my gospel message and the books I wrote helped the democracy movement achieve final victory. In March 2020, I had a prophetic vision in which a great revival came to China. In the vision, angels bound the evil spirit behind the Chinese Communist Party. The evil spirit was the same size as a dolphin and was wrapped in a green military uniform. These prophetic dreams and visions showed me that God's intention is to democratize and evangelize China. And God's will for me personally is to participate in this movement and to spread the gospel to Chinese people through this movement. I won't go into detail about this experience. I'll tell you more about it in a separate article. After a series of events, we finally joined the movement's branch office in Washington, D.C. in early 2021. At this time, I found out that a lot of Christians were already involved in this movement. A Christian Bible meeting was already being held in its Washington branch. The Chinese Christians got together to study the Bible together and pray for the participants of this movement. After gathering with them for some time, we felt that we should live stream the content of our Bible studies to help more Chinese whistleblower members understand the Bible and Christian beliefs. So we chose Exodus, a book that tells the story of how the Israelites came out of Egypt under the leadership of Moses. No picture can better describe the current situation in China. The prophetic appearances of the Lord Jesus, as well as the prophetic words that some prophets gave me, have helped me clearly understand that the 21st century is the century where China is evangelized. We have the opportunity to be involved in one of the greatest exoduses we've ever had in our thousands of years of Chinese history. Not only Pharaoh, the dictatorship of the Communist Party, will be overthrown, but many Chinese people will be freed from Satan's slavery and walk in the light instead of darkness. In today's Bible study, I'm sharing the inspiration that I received during the whistleblower Bible studies. At each meeting, many brothers and sisters shared their insights, and the meetings last about an hour and a half. In this article, I'm recording the inspiration that I've received from the Holy Spirit during the meetings. At each meeting, I hope to record the inspirations that the Holy Spirit gives me, so I can disseminate the message through both text and video. I want to help as many people as I can. Hebrews 11, 23-27 records the story of Moses' faith and his parents' faith. These verses say, By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents, because they saw that the child was beautiful, and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. This passage describes the faith of Moses and his parents. It is included in the Hall of Faith in Hebrews 11. As mentioned above, the midwives are not mentioned in this chapter. However, I believe that the midwife's faith paved the way for the entire book of Exodus. Exodus is the story of how the Israelites came out of Egypt under the leadership of Moses. This is a story of faith. The very first people who exercised faith in the book of Exodus were the midwives. They were not afraid of Pharaoh. They saved the life of the Israelite boys in direct opposition to the king's command. They provided an example of faith for Moses. In a spiritual sense, Midwives' faith actually paved the way for Moses' faith. The story of the midwives in Exodus 1 points to the theme of the entire book of Exodus, faith. 
It was God who led the people out of Egypt. But the Israelites' faith was also very important. Some theologians speculate that not all the Israelites came out of Egypt, but only those who believed in Moses and God. This, of course, is speculation. But in the New Testament, it's clear that if we do not have faith, we will not receive God's salvation. To be delivered from our own slavery and oppression, we need to exercise faith in God. God's salvation has been freely given to us in Christ through the finished work of Jesus on the cross. But we must receive this salvation by our faith. Our faith is very important. In addition to faith, it's important to recognize the behavior or works that result from faith. If the midwives had claimed to have faith but failed to protect the Israelite boys, it would be hard to tell that they really trusted God. James 2.24 says, You see that a person is justified by works, and not by faith alone. James also says that Abraham's faith was shown through his sacrifice of Isaac, and Rahab's trust was manifested when she welcomed the spies. If we say that we have faith, but do not act on it, it's very difficult for us to please God. In Egypt, the Israelites were a minority. Authoritarians gain control over minorities by winning over a few people into the system, giving them some benefits, and using them as tools to enslave other minority people. Insider is a term used in China to describe those who work in the government or in government-sponsored organizations. I'm guessing that the midwives were insiders. The Bible only mentions two midwives, and the Israelites probably had a population of two to three million when they came out of Egypt. It would have been impossible for two midwives to deliver all the Israelites, so it's more likely that these two midwives were the officials that were responsible for all the Israelite midwives. They were the ones who made the policies regarding Israeli births. They may have received salaries from the Egyptian pharaohs and gain considerable status. This is why I call them insiders. One of the ways Satan tries to enslave us is by using insiders to gain access. But instead of accepting such temptation or fearing Pharaoh, the midwives feared God. They didn't obey Pharaoh. They did not kill the Hebrew boys. This must have made Pharaoh unhappy. The Bible says that God greatly blessed the midwives, but it doesn't tell us whether Pharaoh persecuted them. It's easy to imagine that they may have been persecuted by Pharaoh. Perhaps he cut off their money, removed the benefits of the system, or no longer allowed them to hold their positions of importance. None of these things are recorded in the Bible, but my speculation makes sense. God gave these midwives families because they feared him. They may have lost the external rewards from Pharaoh, but God blessed them greatly. Many Christians in China work within the system. If they face the same situation as the midwives, will they be able to make the same choice? If I'm involved in a similar system, will I choose faith? Honestly, such a choice is not easy. But the midwives set a good example for us. They trusted God without fearing Pharaoh. They weren't afraid of losing their benefits within the system. In the same way, we must remember that not even a sparrow will fall on the ground without God's permission. We must trust in God. In the process of resisting authoritarianism and achieving China's democratization, Chinese Christians working within the system as insiders must learn from the examples of these two Hebrew midwives, Shipra and Pua. When Pharaoh found out that his first attempt to murder the Israelite boys had failed, he ordered the Egyptians, who did not know God, to persecute God's chosen people. The last verse of this chapter says, Pharaoh commanded all his people, every son that is born to the Hebrews you shall cast into the Nile, but you shall let every daughter live, Exodus 1.22. In effect, Pharaoh said to the Egyptians, Look, all the problems of our country come from the Israelites. They've occupied our best land, the land of Goshen, which is rich in water and vegetation. 
They also raise cattle and sheep, which is an abomination to us Egyptians. Genesis 46:34. They even offer sacrifices to their god Jehovah. Jehovah is not our god. They do not worship Egyptian gods. Ethnic conflict is very easy to stir up. It is a tool often used by tyrannical rulers or interest groups. We are created in the image of God. Jesus taught us to love one another. Therefore, all political groups that use ethnic conflicts to achieve their own political goals are servants of Satan. They do it for their own benefit. Their willingness to serve Satan is used to enslave others. Satan uses this method, which is using some people to enslave other people. Not only is ethnic or racial conflict used by the enemy to enslave people, but Satan also uses greed to enslave others. In Exodus, Pharaoh's greed forced him to try to exterminate the Israelites. He first instigated slave labor, making the Israelites build two store cities for Pharaoh, Exodus 1.11. They had to make mortar and brick and do all kinds of work, Exodus 1.14 but they were still growing in number. Pharaoh felt that his power and finances were being threatened, so he decided to kill all the boys. Through many different tactics, Satan persecutes believers and drives them into a corner. When Chinese people are cornered, they often say, Do you want me to die? Under such persecution, many people feel they have nowhere to turn. They are driven to the point of despair. Isn't this the situation in today's society? In difficult situations of persecution, it's inevitable that people start to feel discouraged. When they encounter difficulties, they appeal to God. But just like the Israelites, they feel that God is silent. They think that God is not listening to their prayers. But just like God was working behind the scenes to bring a deliverer for Israel, God is working behind the scenes to help and encourage every persecuted believer today. Although the Lord clearly told Abraham in Genesis 15 that his descendants would be in slavery in Egypt for 400 years, many Israelites were unaware of God's promise to Abraham. After 400 years of not hearing from him, they thought that they had been abandoned. Yet all this time God was quietly preparing a deliverer, Moses. When the Lord appeared to Moses in Exodus 3.7, he said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings. It's not that God did not know the pain of the Israelites. It just wasn't time yet. When the time came, Moses realized that it was God's plan for him to become a shepherd in the wilderness. There God trained him for the job of leading the Israelites out of Egypt. Similarly, in this world full of suffering, many Chinese people have lost hope. They think that God has abandoned them. But on the contrary, God is working behind the scenes. In God's time, salvation will come to China. The Holy Spirit clearly told me that a great revival will come to China and that at least a hundred million people will be saved. In another dream, I was taken to heaven and saw many saints in heaven having a meeting to discuss the great revival in China. My hostess told me that this great revival would be unlike anything she ever saw while still on earth. I believe that a great revival will come to China and countless Chinese people will be freed from Egyptian slavery, be delivered from darkness, and begin to walk in the light. Every one of us Christians can participate in the call to be like Moses. God wants us to collectively participate in bringing deliverance to China. How glorious it is to have the opportunity to cooperate with God to lead countless Chinese people out of Egypt. Stay tuned for more Bible studies from Exodus. I will continue to share the contents of our Bible studies through writing and videos. If this article blessed you, please consider supporting us. We have a lot of materials that need to be translated and recorded. Brother Jairus is doing this on a volunteer basis, but we still need to pay for translation and recording. Jairus Bible World Ministries is a 501c3 nonprofit organization, and we can provide tax-exempt receipts for your records. You can visit our website, 
www.gyrusbibleworld.com to donate online or send a check to P.O. Box 1643, Ellicott City, Maryland, 21041. Please make checks payable to Gyrus Bible World Incorporated. You can also donate via PayPal. Our PayPal email address is info at gyrusbibleworld.com. We greatly appreciate your support. Music, Acoustic Guitar One by Audionautics is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution license.